the top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. orders strict implementation of laws versus rice smugglers and hoarders in the country. A lawmaker emphasizes irregularities in the Office of the Vice President's request for confidential funds, pointing to specific wording in a 2022 letter to the Department of Budget and Management. The Department of Foreign Affairs says that the Philippine government's decision to remove the floating barriers in Scarborough Shoal aligns with the country's stance regarding the West Philippine Sea. And the death toll due to diseases related to the September 11 terrorist attacks now equal to the lives lost on the day of the traumatic incident. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, September 26, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the globe. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Mariela Toza. First in the news. In a display of authority and resolute stance against smuggling, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. took charge overseeing the distribution of confiscated rice to improvised or impoverished families in Malate, Manila. This act stands as a strong signal from the government emphasizing the seriousness in combating illegal smuggling operations. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has made it abundantly clear that he is resolute in his mission to eradicate rice smuggling and hoarding in the country. In a commanding address delivered during the rice distribution event at the San Andres Sports Complex in Manila, President Marcos issued a strong directive to all relevant agencies. He emphasized the necessity of strictly enforcing existing laws to effectively address the pressing rice issues. Kaya inaatasan ko ang lahat ng mga opisyal, mga otoridad at mga ahensya na higpitan ng husto ang papatupad ng pulisiya at batas hinggil sa isyu ng bigas. President Marcos said hoarders, smugglers and rice manipulators are the actual race weevils that destroy the ecological balance of rice supply and demand. Ang bukbuk na lubos na sumisira sa balanse ng supply at presyo ng bigas ay sa merkado ang hoarding at saka ang smuggling at price manipulation na ginagawa ng mapagsamantalang mga negosyante. PBBM acknowledged that this will not be an easy battle for the government as the smugglers, hoarders and price manipulators have been operating for so long. Despite this, he is determined to combat their illegal operations. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has firmly rejected a proposal for a temporary reduction in rice tariffs aimed at curbing the surge in rice prices within the market. According to President Marcos, the current period is not conducive for reducing tariff rates due to the projected decrease in world rice prices. He emphasized that tariff reductions typically occur when prices are on the rise. These statements were made shortly after a sectoral meeting at Malacanang where the National Economic and Development Authority presented updates on the proposed rice tariff reduction. The National Food Authority is steadfast in their mission to ensure sufficient buffer stock targeting a 15 to 30 day supply to meet the needs in the country. NFA Administrator Roderico Bioco emphasized their commitment by intensifying palay procurement from farmers, offering an improved buying price of 23 pesos per kilogram. Anticipating a robust harvest season, they are preparing for a surge in palay procurement. To achieve this, they require a budget of 20 billion pesos and the Land Bank and the Development Bank of the Philippines have extended their support by offering loans to facilitate the procurement process. 
Beyond assisting the victims of natural calamities, the NFA is broadening its scope, including those living in poverty among its beneficiaries. You know, poverty is another form of calamity, no? So it's an outcome of uh, calamity, a man-made calamity, and that's why we're looking at uh, providing a, better, a bigger role for NFA you know, to combat poverty. The office of the vice president requested originally an amount of 250 million pesos in confidential funds in 2022. But according to the budget sponsor of the office of the president, ACT CIS party list representative Erwin Tulfo, President Bongbong Marcos Jr. approved 125 million pesos. Rosa Licos will tell us why. During the plenary debates of the House of Representatives on the 2024 budget proposal of the Office of the President or OP, Albay 1st District Representative Edsel Lagman asked for a copy of the original request of the Office of the Vice President for its 2022 confidential funds. The copy of the letter addressed to the Department of Budget and Management on August 22, 2022 was given to the House of Representatives. It was revealed that the OVP originally requested an amount of 250 million pesos in confidential funds. However, only 125 million pesos was approved by President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. According to OP budget sponsor Anti-Crime and Terrorism Community Involvement and Support or AXIS Party List Representative Erwin Tulfo. There was uh, indeed a uh, request, uh, but the request was 250 million pesos, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, how much was approved? Only 125 million was granted, uh, Mr. Speaker, and this was covered by uh, rules or regulations uh, uh, covered by uh, the release of the Office of the President this budget. Mr. Speaker. Representative Lagman insisted the release of the confidential funds to the OVP from PBBM's contingent funds is unconstitutional. There was zero appropriation on the confidential funds of OVP in 2022. However, Representative Tulfo maintained the legality of the release of the funds to the OVP. He added it was from the contingent fund of the OP and a special purpose fund for the new projects and activities. It is unconstitutional for any transfer by one office to another, like the transfer of funds from the office of the president to the office of the vice president. There is nothing to be augmented because the OBP has a zero appropriation for confidential funds in 2022. Zero appropriation cannot be augmented. The 2024 proposed budget of the OP has already hurdled the House plenary deliberation. Meanwhile, the sponsorship as well as the interpolation period for the 2024 proposed budget of the OVP and the Department of Education have been rescheduled tomorrow. It was supposedly scheduled for today, September 26, but has been cancelled due to a possible conflict of schedule According to House Deputy Majority Leader and Appropriations Committee Vice Chairperson Iloilo 1st District Representative Janet Garin, Makabayan Black Lawmaker Kabataan Party List Representative Raul Manuel criticized the abrupt rescheduling. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, is closely monitoring the Senate hearing addressing the abuses attributed to the Socorro Bayanian Services Incorporated, an alleged cult in Surigao del Norte. Chairman George Irwin Garcia said he is trying to connect with the people involved for a dialogue after the Senate hearing convey their concerns. This includes evaluating whether the existing tensions in the area will impact preparations for the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections scheduled for the upcoming month. The National Bureau of Investigation's probe has revealed distressing practices within the alleged cult, such as mandatory military drills, even for children.
And for the news abroad, a solemn milestone has been reached with the recent deaths of members of the New York City Fire Department related to the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Annie Mancilia will give us the details live. Yes, Annie, good evening. Arlene, a few days after the 22nd anniversary of one of the most traumatic events of the century, the September 2001 suicide attacks, two more members of the New York Fire Department have died. According to New York Fire Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh, with these new death tolls related to 9-11 sickness, a summer milestone was reached. 343 members of the New York City Fire Department lost their lives during the day of the attacks. This now equals to those who have died from 9-11 related illnesses. Hilda Vanata, an emergency medical technician, died on September 20 from cancer, while Robert Fulco, a retired firefighter, died on September 23 from pulmonary fibrosis. In a statement release, both of these ailments were a result of the rescue and recovery mission at the World Trade Center. On September 11, 2001, suicide attackers crashed two U.S. passenger jets into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, killing over 2,900 people and marking the largest loss of emergency personnel in U.S. history. Currently, 11,000 of the first responders of that day suffer from 9-11-related sickness, including 3,500 with cancer. Back to you, Arlen. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Arlen. For those watching or live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Transport groups seek the approval of one peso provisional fare increase next week due to series of oil price hike. JP Nunez will tell us why. Due to the continuous oil price increase, transport groups lament that the fare increase is necessary. According to Pasang Mazda and Apto, they want the approval of the 1 peso provisional fare increase next week. This after the hearing on Thursday, September 28. <laughs> Dahil nga dito sa napakabigat ng presyo ng petrolyo. Sana ulit agad, kung pwede po. Sana po pag uh, after three days or one week, eh, ma nandiyan na po yung provision na authority na namin or, or sana mapapilis po ng, ma ng ma maaga. The petition of 1 peso provisional fare increase is on top of the different fare hike petition which was previously mentioned by LTFRB to undergo tedious process before its approval. Meanwhile, to some public utility vehicle drivers, the oil price rollback of 20 centavos per liter of diesel today doesn't make any change to their income. PUJ drivers calculate that the rollback is only equivalent to less than 12 pesos to their diesel expenses. It is far more than the 400 to 500 pesos they lost from the 11 straight weeks of fuel hike. Matas na yung tinas ng diesel, tapos mag-rollback, 20 centavos lang. Wala, walang epekto. Parang bali wala. Parang hindi rin ramdam sa sobrang mahal talaga eh. Tapos wala masyadong pasahero. Nakarang araw, 250 ang tinaas nila eh. Tapos nag-roll back sila, 20 centavos lang. Parang niloloko lang ata nila tayo. <laughs> JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Chief of the Office for Transportation Security expressed his surprise regarding House Speaker Martin Romualdez's call for his resignation. Nation over a series of elect Office for Transportation Security or OTS Chief Mawaklaska has maintained his innocence, asserting that he has committed no wrongdoing. 
following the demand for his resignation by House Speaker Martin Romualdez in the midst of the cash-swallowing scandal. Office for Transportation Security Administrator Under Secretary Mao Alaska was surprised with the comment of House Speaker Congress Congressman Martin Romualdez. I have done nothing wrong but to cleanse our office with corrupt officials who I am now being attacked for going after corrupt officials. I think I should be, it should be the other way around. The corrupt officials should instead be asked to resign. The case involving stealing of 300 US dollar bill is still being resolved. Mauna pa nawala yung mga nag-iimbestiga. There must be something wrong somewhere, said Yusek Aplaska. In response to this situation, the Department of Transportation or DOTR shed light on the employment conditions of most cleaners within the OTS, highlighting their contract of service status and notably low salaries. I think we need to uh, make them uh, regular employees. No? Uh, we give them training. Uh, we do. Uh, uh, we bet uh, the qualifications of uh, these people. No? Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are uh, some uh, bad eggs, no? but uh, I think we really need to uh, uh, hire the right people. No? Uh, we need to give them the right training. Meanwhile, Senator Bato de la Rosa expressed skepticism regarding regularization as the solution, indicating differing perspectives on how to address this issue. Ang PNP, daming involved sa droga noon, daming nangungurap na polis, dinugli ni, si, ni, ni President Duterte yung sweldo from uh, drug lord protector. Ang PNP na tuloy naging uh, drug lord. Just to illustrate the example na remunerization or whatever is not really the ultimate solution. Siguro yung waiting, sir. Kahit na, alam mo, kahit na napakababa ang sweldo, kahit na hindi sila regular, ha, contractual lang, pero kung event niya na properly yan, maraming marami pa rin nag-apply. Bernadette Tinoy, TV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Following the Philippine government's decision to remove the floating barriers in Scarborough Shoal, the Department of Foreign Affairs says this is in line with the country's position in the West Philippine Sea. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, is ready to file a diplomatic protest against China over the installation of floating barriers by the Chinese Coast Guard that obstructed the southeast entrance of Scarborough Shoal, also known as Bajo de Masinlok. In the Senate budget hearing of the DFA, Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo says he is awaiting the full report from the Philippine Coast Guard, or PCG, before lodging the complaint. PCG Commandant Admiral Artemio Abu also confirms during a Senate budget hearing that the barriers have been removed and that they have gathered evidence including the sinker of the barrier should the government proceed with the filing of a case. Manalo says the move to remove the floating barriers is consistent with the Philippines position in the West Philippine Sea. Once we uh, get confirmations uh, Philippine Coast Guard we of course will uh, will uh, issue a protest to the Chinese embassy here uh, and we will cite the reasons why uh, putting a putting a uh, kind of barrier is uh, not consistent or illegal. Other lawmakers are also supportive of the move, noting that Scarborough Shoal is within the exclusive economic zone of the country. Actually, kung meron nga may karapatan maglagay ng obstacles doon, baka tayo pa eh. Pero hindi, na, hindi rin natin gagawin yun because of that second part of the ruling na uh, we should allow also fisher folk from other from other countries to, to fish in the, in the area, Mr. Chairman. So that is our interpretation and that's how we will I mean that's the interpretation we will maintain while the DFA chief recognizes the differences in the complex relationship between China and the Philippines he says the aim is to resolve the maritime disputes peacefully but for Senator Ronald de la Rosa Manalo should now explore other means to get China's attention we are sick and tired of uh, all this uh, diplomatic protest parang walang nangyari hindi nila naksyonan hindi ignore nila Ako ang Secretary of Foreign Affairs, tawagan ko yung, yung deploy ayaw ko na yan, ambasador yan, hangin ka ito, lasingin kita, tapos 
Yung kanya-kanya diskarte ba? Diskartehan mo kung para makuha natin informasyon galing sa kanila. Manalo notes they will have to study the procedures on the proposal to file a complaint before the International Tribunal on the Law of the Sea over China's aggressive actions in the West Philippine Sea. The DFA secretary adds the country continues to bolster its alliance with other nations, including its campaign to secure a seat in the United Nations Security Council. Jorge Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. On Sunday night, September 24th, two Molotov cocktails were thrown at the Cuban embassy in the United States. According to Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez Perilla, no one was hurt during the incident. The attack occurred, occurred after Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel returned to Cuba following his participation in United Nations events in New York. Havana authorities suspect Cuban exiles in the U.S. to be behind this act. President Diaz-Canel mentioned that he is awaiting action from North American authorities. And in other global news, this Monday brought grim tidings as Russia launched airstrikes directly targeting Ukraine's vital grain storages and ports crucial for exports. The assault has dealt a significant blow to Ukraine's ability to ship out essential grain, further exacerbating an already sustained global food crisis. Nina Bascon will tell us why. Ukraine grapples with a grim reality as Russia's airstrikes leave six deaths and damaged infrastructure. The Black Sea port and vital grain storages have suffered, dealing a severe blow to Ukraine's ability to export crucial grains during these trying times. The assault, revealed by Ukrainian officials on Monday, is part of Russia's ongoing campaign, which escalated after their abrupt withdrawal from a pivotal Black Sea shipment agreement in July, a withdrawal that exacerbated the existing global food crisis. Amidst the devastation, Ukraine has shown resilience, making measured gains in a southern counteroffensive. However, this has only prompted Russia to intensify their strikes. Ukraine now pins hope on strengthening their forces through forthcoming talks with the United States regarding the famed U.S. Abrams tanks. In the midst of this turmoil, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky, fresh from his visit to the United States, extends his gratitude, seeking new contracts and expanded supply geography to fortify their nation. Meanwhile, a glimmer of hope emerges. A humanitarian corridor has been established. It facilitates the movement of grain exports from the Black Sea coast to African and Asian markets via train and road. The latest shipments have already set sail, offering a ray of optimism amidst the shadows of adversity. Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A looming threat looms over the United States government. If Congress fails to provide funding for the fiscal year by Saturday, September 30th, a government shutdown awaits. This occurs when Congress cannot pass legislation for funding that the president would sign into law. The expected commencement of this shutdown is at 12.01 a.m. on October 1st, 2023. If it materializes, federal agencies will grind to a halt, seizing all non-essential work. Tragically, millions of federal employees will bear the brunt left without their deserved pay. The impact would reverberate across critical sectors, including the military, law enforcement, Securities and Exchange Commission, museums, Food and Drug Administration, National Labor Relations Board, and more. However, amidst this uncertainty, one institution remains unaffected. The United States Postal Service standing apart as it operates independently from Congress for its funding. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Oral and Quijano, live from Toronto, Canada. Good evening. Today, the Department of Trade and Industry orchestrated a captivating and culturally rich event, the Fiesta Cucha. This vibrant celebration showcased the diverse talents and creative essence of the people residing in the Cordillera Administrative Region. Grace Flores will tell us why. 
The 3D Cordillera Creative Summit was formally opened in Baguio City today, September 26, led by the Department of Trade and Industry Cordillera, also known as Fiesta Kuchak, championing creativity in the Cordilleras. Because of our sceneries, because of the geographic location that we are in, and because of our, our, our uh, preserved culture and tradition, parang may hinuhugutan tayo na, na ruti uh, that, that, that sprouts to a lot of uh, uh, many possibilities in the Cordillera. So here we are with this Fiesta Kucha. Fiesta Cucha is a term fiesta referring to the Filipinos' love of celebration that showcase the cultural and creative works of the community. Fiesta Cucha is a fusion of fiesta showcasing Filipino love for celebrations that exhibit community culture and creativity, and Pecha Cucha, a Japanese term for short storytelling that allows diverse subjects to be discussed briefly in public. Fiesta Cucha aims to be a platform for the creative citizens of the Cordilleran community who actively promote culture and arts. And uh, we continue with this because as we, uh, as we learn about the creatives, the many aspects of creatives, we are not just doing it, that we are recognizing it as an industry, and of course it is a hope that it will bring economic, economic development in the area. The Department of Trade and Industry encourages supporting emerging creative works from the Cordillerans, fostering creative entrepreneurship, competitiveness, and innovation. For artists and owners of micro, small, medium enterprises, these activities provide a valuable opportunity for the public to discover and appreciate their own artwork. Artists like Giovanni Joy Figan, a toy clay dolls maker, transitioned from creating anime toys to crafting igorot clay dolls which gained popularity in our country. Nagsimula ko ng naggumawa nito last uh, 2020 pero hindi siya igorot dolls um, anime na ano figure and then na-inspire ako na gumawa ng sariling ating uh, cordilleran kaya um, gumawa ako ng pares and then hindi ko akalain na makaka-interest yung mga kababayan natin so doon nag-start yung mga orders from meron din from other country Elime, a Cordilleran waver from Tajan Mountain Province, encourages youth to join the waving industry, one of the region's popular attractions drawing local tourists. Ang challenge is siguro na masasabi ko yung um, how to encourage uh, the younger generations to be more participative and cooperative when it comes to doing this uh, uh, kind of craft. Kasi Ang alam naman ang alam ng mga kabataan yata ngayon ay nasa technology lahat ng ng hanap buhay. Hindi nila alam na ang ang weaving industry is also a lucrative uh, uh, for a lucrative business. However, due to high demand and a limited number of weavers, meeting the demand spatially abroad remains a challenge. At the summit's pavilion, the delightful aroma of Benguet coffee will greet you. You'll find silver craft UNESCO creative crafts, handcrafted wood, flowers made from wood, corn husk, paper and fabrics, and breathtaking paintings by the Pasacali Group artist. Regional Director Juliet Lucas of DTI Cordillera highlights the creative arts of stakeholders have significantly contributed to the region's economy. Artists and art enthusiasts are warmly invited to be part of the Fiesta Cucha celebration. Grace Flores, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Brace yourselves for the much-anticipated release of three new songs by the KDR Music House. These compositions are crafted by up-and-coming independent Filipino artists who were discovered through the platform of Wish 1075's Uncharted. It is an exceptional opportunity to recognize the blossoming talents that are enriching our musical landscape. Gladys Dawabi details why. 
Wish 107.5's Uncharted Campaign. The KDR Music House, a company specializing in music publishing, talent management, and event production, has unearthed remarkable talents with a deep passion for music. The original compositions from these exceptional talents are set to be unveiled and shared with the public starting tomorrow. On September 27th, the poignant love song Dreams and Memories by Ali, capturing the beauty of waiting, will be made available on all major digital music platforms. Patuloy lang kayo magmahal at darating din yung panahon para sa inyo. Huwag niyo madaliin. Magtiwala lang kayo. Darating din yan. Following that, on September 28th, the reggae band Yables will release their song, Bakasyon Grande. This track serves as a reminder for hardworking Filipinos to slow down and take a break. A much needed respite. Pinapakita dito sa kanta na to na you deserve na magkaroon ng ng relaxation paminsan-minsan or yun nga, yung bakasyon grande. Lalong-lalo na dun sa mga uh, workaholic nating mga kababayan. And come Friday is the brand new Who Got Song by S.A. Bilanyo entitled But Now You're Gone. This song will undoubtedly resonate with those who have faced a heartache and emerge stronger, learning to carry on with life. Heartbreaks are there, uh, a pain is there, and there's always a way to find yourself. Life goes on, nothing ever comes easy in life, so you just have to go through whether they're gone or not. Stay tuned for these fresh, inspiring tunes. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Our Kasang Bahay. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. And before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God. From the book of James, chapter 4, verse 17, it says, Therefore to him what knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And those are the reasons behind the news September 26, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Mariela Toza, live from Perth, Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God.